Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a little modification to the refilling process of the T-Slim cartridge. Um, first we'll watch the start of the uh, tandem video that I've found on YouTube and I'm going to interrupt it for where I change the process. Um, okay, I'm back to you soon. In this video, we'll be using the following items. A new unused cartridge, a new unused infusion set, a cartridge removal tool or coin, and a fill syringe with needle filled with either Humalog or Nova Rapid U100 insulin. We recommend using room temperature insulin to minimize the risk of air bubbles. Refer to your user guide for detailed instructions for drawing insulin from a vial. How much insulin you put in will be determined in conjunction with your healthcare team. But a good rule is to fill at least 95 units, but no more than 300 units. Be aware that overfilling can damage your cartridge. If your pump screen times out at any point during the load process, just unlock your pump and it will resume right where you left off. First, examine your cartridge and packaging for any visible damage. If you suspect the cartridge may be damaged, do not use it. Now, open the package and remove the cartridge. Next, holding your cartridge upright, insert the needle into the white fill port on top of the cartridge. It should stop about halfway, but occasionally will go all the way in. Either way is fine, but don't try to force it once you feel some resistance. Keeping your cartridge and syringe both vertical, slowly pull up on the plunger until it's fully retracted in order to remove any residual air in the cartridge. You'll probably see some bubbles during this step. With the needle still in the cartridge, gently release the plunger. Air pressure will pull it back to a neutral position, but will not push any air back into the cartridge. Now you can remove the needle from the fill port. This step removes any air that may have been trapped in the cartridge bag. So we all know that process. Um, a number of people suffer from what has been called coring of the white rubber. Um, I'm going to overlay a picture or a couple of pictures that show the insides and then a diagram um, showing now that shows the needle both in the wrong place and when it goes into the right place you, you usually know it the needle will go in further and it kind of is like oh yeah i'm free i'm out of the rubber when you know you're in that place you know it and when that happens personally i've not had a um a coring at all so that's I've got this syringe um, full. It's a bit hard to line everything up with this, doing this recording. Um, so I'm going to do my best. Oh, and a little bit of insulin on the tip. That doesn't really matter. And it's always fun trying to reach around the camera. And yeah, I felt it. So I can feel the needle going through the rubber and then it comes out the other side of the rubber. Now, the next step is normally to pull back and you can see the air bubbles come out. Yeah, that's about right. Now, the normal process, the tandem says, is to pull the syringe out. And it's always hand, handy having a bit of a handshake. But you can see that bubble up the top there. What tandem recommends is to pull the needle out and um, invert the needle, invert the syringe, and push the air out. Now, you can either do that back into a vial or a pen fill, you know, the three mil um, pen cartridges that some people use. I don't. I don't do anything here. I just continue. Because what happens is that when well, you, can, you can flick... And again, this is hard, keeping everything in front of the camera at the same time. I'm pretty certain that all that air, I'm flicking, flicking, trying to get it in front of the camera. Flicking it so the air is up top. Remember, some people don't even remove the air out. So we're not, um, not hurting anything by doing this. And 
what happens is when the air, what we look for is when the air reaches that connector part between the, you know, where the syringe and the needle meet, you can pick that up. You can see that. So what I'm going to do is, as you know, I've not disconnected the, the syringe. I'm going to push, pushing in. It's hard getting the, the it all far enough away from the, the camera to be able to see too much. But I'm getting close to it now. You can see that bubble of air just below the plunger. And this is why I've got the white background. You can usually tell when it goes into... I've got the handshakes. Anyway, I've gone. You can usually tell when that air goes in, excuse the handshakes, and pull out. Um, and that's it. That's really the only change. It just saves a lot of mucking around. If you did have an excess of air in the um, syringe, you'll see the air go into that um, orange connector section. Um, just, just here, just behind my thumb, I think it's just behind it, and that's it, bye now. If everything looks good and there are no leaks, you've successfully filled your cartridge and are ready to install it onto your pump. Now. Turn on and unlock your pump, and from the home screen, tap Options, then tap Load. Next, tap Change Cartridge. The pump will tell you that all deliveries will be stopped, which is fine since you don't want to be trying to pump while you're changing your cartridge. So tap the check mark to continue. Next, you'll be prompted to disconnect your infusion set from your body. Tap the check mark to continue. You should see the Preparing for Cartridge screen. Remove your used cartridge using the Removal tool. You can also use a coin. Install your newly filled cartridge by placing the bottom edge of the end of the pump like this and lining up the grooves on either side of the cartridge with these guide tracks on the pump. Once lined up properly, push the cartridge on until you feel it click into place. The cartridge should fit smoothly against the pump. Your pump will take a few moments to detect the newly installed cartridge. Your pump will prompt you to fill your tubing with insulin. Never ever fill your tubing when it's connected to your body. This could result in the unintended delivery of insulin. Always disconnect your infusion set from your body before you begin a load sequence. Your pump will remind you of this each time you tap load. Before you can fill your tubing, you need to connect your tubing to the cartridge. Your infusion set may look different, but the tubing fill process is the same. Insert this end into the tubing lock connector on your cartridge and twist clockwise. Make sure it's nice and tight. A loose connection can lead to delivery problems, so it's always a good idea to double check and when in doubt, give it an extra twist. Next, turn your pump so it's vertical. This allows any residual air left in your cartridge to be pumped out first. Now, tap Start to fill your tubing. Your pump will beep periodically to let you know that it's filling the tubing. As the tubing fills, you may notice some small air bubbles in the first few inches of insulin. Very tiny ones aren't a concern, but anything larger should be pumped out. Even though air bubbles themselves will not harm you, there could be a risk of high blood sugar if air is infused in place of insulin. Once you notice three drops come out of the end of the tubing and you're satisfied that there are no large air bubbles left, tap stop. Your pump will ask you to confirm that you saw drops at the end of the tubing. If you saw drops, tap done. If you stopped the fill process before you saw drops, tap fill to continue. You have now successfully filled your tubing. Refer to the instructions for your specific infusion set to insert and fill your cannula. Then, resume insulin delivery. Visit our website for videos about each of the infusion sets we offer.